When you're driving this around a winding snow covered back road on a quality set of winter tires as we are now, you're seeing some of the HRV's best work. In terms of the chassis, the handling, the tuning, the response, and specifically the response from the brakes and the steering, there's not that much separating this from some of your sportier options in this segment. Go up inside. Big, big jump. Good boy. This is a video on the all new 2023 Honda HRV, but to help understand it a bit better and to do justice to the highly loyal base of first generation HRV shoppers that might be looking to upgrade to a second generation unit, let's take a look at this first generation machine for a moment for a little context. By the way, in the road test, which I'll be showing you a little later in this video, we're using the same roads, weather conditions, and even winter tires in our test drive of the all new 2023. And that'll give us a great comparison between how the first and second generation machines handle snow and ice, which is actually really good news, but more on that later. As a dog owner, the original HRV just about wound up in my driveway as a personal car since it's all wheel drive equipped, good in the snow, easy on gas, not too high from the ground, and also very flexible. All things I like as a dog owner, but none of them as much as I loved the original HRV's magic seat. Do you find that awkward to get in and out of? I find it a little bit like this. Like it's like a little like a. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird shape to the door to opening with yeah, that. Yeah, like I, this seems a little too narrow. Or the door doesn't open up enough. A sort of cherry on the top feature that's a favorite amongst dog owners since you can flip up the seat bottoms, allowing your dog to walk in with almost no jump and as they get older, they can walk straight out the other side without turning around, which is much easier. It's no wonder there were so many of these things in the parking lot at Skiplin Kennels in Garson, Ontario, where Ghost went to school and learned to be a very good boy. To me, this first generation HRV was the ultimate little crossover for dog owners, mainly for that rear seat. Still, temptation got the best of me and I was ultimately seduced by one 2019 Volkswagen Alltrack, mostly thanks to a combination of a manual transmission and all-wheel drive that was unavailable from the Honda. Driving an all-wheel drive equipped wagon with a stick sure is fun, but I still long for the magic seat on the daily. Today, the Alltrack has been discontinued and there are no more manual wagons. Also, the HRV's magic seat is gone, which to me is a bummer. Way she goes. We'll get to the road test in a moment, but first let's answer a few popular questions. How does the 2023 Honda HRV compare to the 2022? On size, the new HRV's wheelbase is stretched 45 millimeters further apart, the body is 209 millimeters longer overall, height increases by 15 millimeters, and passenger volume grows by 73 liters for a total of 2,794. That's more than the Toyota Corolla Cross. There's also improved second row legroom with more than the Kona, Corolla Cross, and Crosstrek. By the way, the Crosstrek trails the HRV's passenger volume by 33 liters and gives the HRV a 21 mm advantage in front seat headroom and a 4 mm advantage in rear seat headroom. The Crosstrek serves up 31 mm more front seat legroom though, but the HRV takes the lead for seats up cargo volume with a full 100 liter advantage. The new HRV is also wider than its predecessor by 70 mm, weight is up by 78 kg, and horsepower from the sole 2 liter 4 cylinder engine offering is up by 17. So shoppers coming to the new HRV from a first generation unit will therefore find a more spacious and accommodating interior and a more comfortable and adult friendly rear seat. How does the 2023 Honda HRV's fuel economy stack up? With front wheel drive, the new HRV uses 8.3 liters per 100 kilometers combined. With all wheel drive, it's 8.7 liters per 100 kilometers combined, or about $150 worth of extra gas per year to run the all wheel drive system, based on gas costing $1.50 per liter and driving 25,000 kilometers annually. Translation going all wheel drive will increase your annual fuel cost by about 150 bucks. So compared to the previous generation HRV, fuel consumption is up slightly, and if you're upgrading from a first generation to a second generation unit, allow an extra $200 or so per year in your annual fuel budget based on that math. 
That's about $300 per year more than a comparable Subaru Crosstrek, $200 more per year than a comparable Hyundai Kona, and about $340 per year more than a comparable Toyota Corolla Cross. By the way, all of those competitors offer multiple engine options, while the HRV makes do with a single 2-liter 4-cylinder offering. How does the Honda HRV's all-wheel drive system work? Recent updates to the system deliver improved performance in snow mode, which starts in the transmission's second gear ratio, reduces throttle response, and sends more power to the rear wheels to minimize spinning. Functionally, this helps improve acceleration while reducing understeer. The availability of additional rear wheel torque reduces the load on the front wheels, which makes for improved performance on slippery inclines, too. A little full throttle demonstration here for you so you can see what to expect in terms of engine noise. I'm just going to be quiet, put my foot to the floor, and let you listen to the sound that comes in from under the hood. So here we go. Oh, is that a squirrel? Oh, I saved him. He made it. To control the front to rear power split of the system, an electric motor drives a component called a control pump, which creates oil pressure. This pressure is used to engage a clutch within the all-wheel drive system, which clamps up to power the rear wheels. The system is fully automatic and self-optimizing, and requires no driver decision making at any time whatsoever. With a few clicks, drivers can call up an all-wheel drive power distribution infographic in the instrument cluster to watch what the system is up to in real time. So we are on a set of Blizzak WS90 winter tires. If you're looking for a recommendation on a winter tire for your HRV, I don't think you'll be disappointed with these. I've been driving through a lot of snow, a lot of slush, uh, ice, and particularly hard pack surfaces like we're on today. And man, can you ever lean on these things. 60 kilometers an hour, full ABS stop. Nice bite, getting a little bit of a shove out of my seat there. Uh, that is exactly the kind of stopping power that you want when you're driving on a surface like this. Just gentle inputs with the steering and keeping your eyes up. The traction control system, you're hardly going to feel that in action. Uh, very responsive to lift off oversteer if that's something you like to do. Easy to steer this car around the corners with the throttle and brakes. Uh, but really, it's the stopping power. Here we go again. Full ABS stop. 2023 Honda HRV Road Test. There's rarely a bad time in the snow on a set of Blizzak WS90 winter tires like the ones fitted to my tester for its midwinter road test. These were the same tires fitted when I tested the last generation HRV in similar winter conditions and on these same roads, no less. This strong basis for comparison revealed one of the most important things about the way the 2023 Honda HRV drives in the winter. The feel is highly familiar. In the previous HRV, I appreciated the machine's athletic and eager feel when driving on snow covered roads. Specifically, responses from steering and brakes are precise and eager, with a good set of winter tires mounted. Both steering and brakes offer a direct feel with predictable responses. Steering is quick and light enough to be playful and engaging on snow and ice, but not so quick that it feels hyperactive, touchy, or nervous. Brakes operate with a touch of numbness at the top of the pedal's travel to help with smoothness, though a strong and linear bite and buildup of braking force meets your foot when digging in deeper. This is still the case for the new HRV. I was pleased at how much of the original machine's feel on snow and ice is still present here. The winter driving DNA has carried over nicely. From the driver's seat, as before, the car feels stable and planted when drivers work carefully, but lighter and more playful when the time comes to carve one's way through a winding, slippery back road. Even coming into a corner a little bit too quickly, we're kind of understeering a bit, just lift that throttle, your natural panic reaction is going to bring the back of the car around in line. Again, no drama, no surprises. This is actually quite a lot of fun to drive in the snow. I just wish it had like 75 more horsepower or so. So if you need a crossover that's great in the snow but prefer the feel of an all-wheel drive car that's a bit on the sporty side, I think you'll like the setup. On this test drive, I kept going back to the brakes as a strong point. Stopping bite builds aggressively as drivers press deeper into the pedal, and the positive building of pressure and resistance combine with easy to modulate precision for a strong sensation of quick and controlled stopping power. In emergency braking on split traction surfaces, the ABS system mitigates the tendency of the vehicle to pull from one side to the other quite nicely too, with most such squirming and sliding under braking happening gently, predictably, and with no surprises. The HRV's feel at the tips of the fingers and toes on slippery surfaces inspires confidence when all systems are capitalizing on the bite from a good set of winter boots. 
Elsewhere, there's a dense and heavy feel to the HRV on the road, anchoring the machine to the surface better than its size leads on. Bonus points for the heated steering wheel button, mounted right on the wheel where it belongs. And the wet blade wipers, which apply fluid directly to the glass at the blade for a faster wipe with no wasted fluid. Sometimes it's the littlest touches that make the biggest difference. Check this out. So we've got wet blade wipers here. Now watch this closely. You're going to see that we've got the fluid going onto the windshield there, but nothing spraying through the air. That's because we've got a little jet on each windshield wiper that applies the fluid directly to the blade and the glass instead of spraying it all through the air. And that means a cleaner, faster wipe in less time using less fluid. And in here, they've even put this little grid pattern that prevents splashback when you're filling up the washer fluid, which also means less wasted washer fluid because no splashback and nobody likes splashback. Interesting center console design to this too. Check this out. USB charging port there and over here on the other side with a little storage underneath it. And so looking at this from the top, what we've got here is actually driver and passenger have access to a USB charging port pretty much right at their fingertips. Nice wide angle backup camera display here. That gives us a really good wide view of what's happening behind us. Solid graphics on that as well. We can also change the view that we have here with these buttons on the bottom if we like. Heated windshield right here and rear seats that easily fold down fully flat just like this you can see that's basically a completely flat surface and that expands our cargo carrying flexibility and that's another handy touch i think potential owners will like the highway ride is comfortable and easy going and the hrv is easy to place between the lines and hold on course though some will wish for a quieter drive during higher speed cruising a little north of the speed limit on rougher back road surfaces allow for some stiffness and choppiness from the HRV's ride at times. Numerous crossover competitors make better use of more suspension travel for a softer but often bouncier ride over the worst surfaces I throw their way. In the HRV, I found common disturbances like suspension noise and interior panel rattles to be nicely managed, and a layer of softness around the edges of the suspension turned in respectable damping of noise and feedback. The rough road ride is generally comfortable and well controlled, with minimized sensation of the vehicle crashing into bumps. Still, the ride can become busy and abrupt over badly beaten pavement, meaning you've got smoother riding choices for your dollar. The 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine spins up 158 horsepower and runs idle stop to reduce wasteful idling. Its dual overhead cams are driven by a maintenance-free chain. The newly revised CVT gearbox can simulate stepped shifting and features various internal component upgrades to improve efficiency and noise levels. Still, throttle response is sludgy without a heavy poke on the throttle, and this engine is absolutely calibrated for an efficiency-first driver. If you're light on the throttle and in no particular rush, the engine hums away in the background smoothly and quietly while generating smooth waves and surges of acceleration in response to pedal inputs. Press harder into the throttle and the transmission steps the revs up, simulating a downshift and gliding the HRV along. At heavy or full throttle and high revs, the power plant becomes much noisier, outright loud at maximum RPM. Fans of older, fast-spinning Honda four-cylinder engines will likely find themselves wishing for a quieter and more pleasing sound from the engine room. If you're not shy about using the revs, performance is adequate, though somewhat disappointing given the far more athletic feel of the brakes, steering, all-wheel drive system, and overall wintertime drive. On board, I found my surroundings from the driver's seat to be neat, tidy, and logical. I appreciated the simple three-dial climate control system, easily manipulated while wearing my beefiest of winter gloves. At 5 foot 10 and 200 pounds, I had ample room around me in all directions, though it's certainly not stretch out roomy. All right, so my comfortable seated driving position as a 5 foot 10, 200 pound guy, here's what's going on around me in terms of space. I have about the width of my hand above me with that sunroof there in terms of headroom. Nothing's particularly cramped or crowded in terms of uh, knee or leg room here. Plenty of at-hand storage. We've got proper cup holders, wireless charging pad there. Of course, that handy center console. Storage cubbies in uh, the door here as well as underneath. So pardon the uh, ridiculous camera angle so I can help you visualize here how much room is around me. Normally, camera guy James is shooting this. He's off today. Uh, so here's a sense of space around me here. Now let's see how I would fit in the back directly behind myself. So first thing to show you hopping in here, this door doesn't open super wide, uh, wide enough, but in some competitors, this is gonna go another couple of degrees back there, sort of opening up that space for you. It's a little head whack there. We've got a watch uh, right here getting in. A little more of a duck. 
Now, once I'm in and seated, the headroom is actually not too bad. Hard to see, but we've got the shape of the roof here. You see this shadow line probably uh, a little bit lower here. That's for the hardware to do with the sunroof and another probably three quarters of an inch or so of headroom behind that. So again, at five foot 10, sitting back here, I'm almost out of headroom, but not quite. So if you're much taller than me, you're probably gonna run out of headroom pretty quickly, but I don't have any complaints on leg and knee room here. You can see that uh, more than the width of my hand, almost uh, probably one and a half, almost two hand widths in front of me there in terms of knee room back here. Plenty of arm room, plenty of thigh room. So as long as your passengers sitting back here are of average height or less, and they're a bit careful uh, with their head coming in through the door here, they're gonna be just fine. <laughs> this might be the first time in the history of us shooting how many hundreds and hundreds of episodes? Like, oh, it's like what, 14, 15 years of this now? Yeah, like it's like you know, <laughs> eight or 900 episodes. Anyways, here's a look at the conditions outside. It doesn't look horrible, but for a camera, I can see 50 feet. Yeah, so we're just... Like, you can't see nothing. Like, it looks like it's a whiteout. Like can you, it, you guys can see. Yeah, let's open the door there. There's nothing. The visibility is so bad. So first time we've actually had a shoot cut short uh, by the weather. The car was no problem, um, but for the camera gear and the camera operator and uh, yeah. for the driver who, who's pretty snow blind and uh, this is getting a little bit risky, we may just have to come back and finish this shooting another day. Which way is the road again? Yeah, exactly, right? All right. Thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe.